Hi, I'm Stanley and today's tutorial is all about compound paths and shapes. So let's get started. I'm going to go over to the Tools panel and select the Rectangle Frame tool. And I'm just going to click and drag and draw myself a random rectangle. And I'm going to hit the V key on the keyboard or click on the Selection tool and hold down the Alt or Option key on the Mac and click and drag and copy that rectangle and just leave it overlapping like so. The next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to open up the Pathfinder panel and you can find that under Window, Object and Layout and Pathfinder. When you open it you will notice it will open as a panel group along with the Align panel. That's fine, I can leave that there. Next. In order to combine these two shapes, I need to select them both. So click to one side, click and drag your mouse so it crosses both objects and let go. You can see now they're both selected. Now, in the Pathfinder panel, under Pathfinder, you have one, two, three, four, five different options. The first one, if you hover over it, it will show you the tooltip and explain to you what it does. And this one, combines the selected objects into one shape. So let's click and see what happens. And there we have it. Two rectangles have now joined to create a new shape. So let me just undo that, Control Z or Command Z. The next is subtracts, so subtract the frontmost object from the backmost, one click, and you can see what happens. The front rectangle's kind of taking a bite out of the one at the back. Other options we have here are uh, intersects, shape, areas. Uh, we've got excludes, overlapping shape, areas. And the last one, it's kind of opposite to the first one. It subtracts the backmost object from the frontmost. Brilliant. So there we have it. Nice and simple combining shapes. And we can combine different shapes, circles, ellipses, rectangles, squares, etc. But what if we wanted to create something a little more complicated? Something like this perhaps, this cog. Well, let's see. I'm going to clear my page and we'll begin. Okay, so the first thing I'm going to do is choose the appropriate tool and it's hiding underneath the rectangle frame tool and it's the polygon frame tool. Now, the first time you use the Polygon Frame tool, you're just going to click and drag, and it's quite likely that you can draw yourself a pentagon. Well, clearly that's not what I need. So I'm just going to backspace that, delete it, and I'm going to double click on the icon of the Polygon Frame tool to open up the Polygon settings. Now in here you can see the number of sides can be changed and the star inset. So I'm going to change the number of sides to 38. I'm just going to type that in. And I'm not quite sure, actually, of the, uh, the percentage for the star inset. So I'm just going to give it 5 for now and see what happens. OK. Now I'm going to click and drag and see what I've got. Brilliant. Well, that's changed somewhat. Um, to Remember to constrain that, to draw a perfect circle, hold down the shift key, let go of your mouse first and then let go of your shift key. Uh, great, I like that. Number of points seems fine. Not as deep as I wanted. I think something a little bit deeper than that, perhaps a 10% would have been better. So I don't have to redraw this. I can just double click the icon again and change the value in the star inset. So I'm just gonna take that up to 10% and then click on OK. I think that's better. Now, it's not actually the only way I can do it. I'm going to show you one other way, which I kind of think is a little bit of fun as well. So I'm going to just delete that. Now, I do know if I click and drag, I'm going to continue drawing more and more of that shape. So let me just delete. This time, I'm going to click and drag and not let go of my mouse. I've still got hold of that shape. Now, it's important not to let go. Now, on the keyboard, if you tap the right arrow key, you're going to duplicate this shape. And if you go up, tap the up arrow, you're going to duplicate it vertically. And 
so on. Now, that's not what I need, so I'm going to tap down and then left until I've got a single shape. Now what I'm going to do now is I'm just going to tap the space bar once. Now you will see nothing on screen happen, there's no indication anything has changed. However, if I now start tapping the right and the left arrow keys on the keyboard, and the up and the down, you will see the effect it's having. I can increase the depth of those points with the right arrow, decrease them with the left, increase the amount with the up and decrease with the down. So maybe you'd like to experiment with that. Now, I've just made some alterations. I'm just going to get that back to something that I preferred. Uh, that'll do. That, that'll do me. Okay, and then I'm going to make sure I hold the shift key down before I let go. Otherwise, you'll have to redraw it. Perfect. So, I'm going to hit the V key or click on the selection tool. Just leave the object selected. And I'm going to click on the align panel. The align panel should be tabbed with the pathfinder. If it's not, remember it's window, object and layout, and there's the align panel. And I'm just going to align this horizontally and vertically so I know it's in the center of my page. Excellent. The next thing I'm going to do is I need to find a way of just trimming off these points. These points here, I think they're a little bit sharp. You wouldn't have them so sharp. So how are we going to remove those sharp points? Well, I'm going to choose the ellipse frame tool. Now, I need to draw a circle over this shape. So when I start to draw my circle, it's you can see it's very difficult to keep that aligned. You could hold the space bar down and reposition it. Let go of the space bar, it locks again. That's kind of useful. It's giving me yeah, a bit, bit of control. But I'm not, going to, I'm not going to do it that way. I'm going to do it a slightly different way. If you hold the Alt or the Option key on the Mac down, Position your cursor right in the center of that shape. That cross is guiding me, look. And I'm gonna go click and drag, and now with the Alt key pressed down, you can see it will draw from the center outwards. Excellent. Now, if you can combine that with the Shift key, you can draw yourself a perfect circle. And I'm just gonna take this beyond there, and I just want to stop about there. Okay, make sure this is aligned, and I'm, I'm quite convinced it is, uh, but just make, make sure by clicking on the vertical and horizontal alignment options we've got there. Yeah, it didn't move, so it was fine. Now, I'm going to hit the V on the keyboard, or click on the selection tool, and click and drag, just so I draw that kind of marquee there over the two of them, just so I can select them both. Because now I need to find an option in the, in the Pathfinder to help me remove those points. Now remember the first one in the Pathfinder options is going to combine these two shapes. That's not really what I want. Kind of interesting shape, but again, not what I want. Alright, so the second one, if you remember, is going to subtract the front from the back. Kind of interesting, but clearly not what we're looking for. The third one, this one intersects the shape areas. Let's see. That's what I'm looking for. Perfect. Brilliant. So, what else are we going to do? Well, I'm going to zoom in and have a look. I just think these points here, it, it's still very sharp, these corners. They're very, very sharp. I quite like to round them off slightly and make it look a little bit more realistic. Because a real cog is slightly rounded. So I'm just going to just to zoom back out, so Command and 0 or Control 0 on the PC. And I'm going to go up to my Control Panel, while well, the object is selected. And I'm going to, just to the left of where it says Auto Fit, you will see your corner options. In here you can see that it's actually set to, to None, which is why they're all sharp. I want to choose the one that says Rounded at the bottom. Straight away, can you see that? Just give it a little bit of a curve. Now you can adjust this ever so slightly. I think I five mil, I don't think beyond there it's going to make any difference at all. I think that's going to be your maximum. But that to me, if I zoom in again, looks pretty good. Maybe hmm, these could have been a bit deeper, but hey. Okay, next step. I want to cut a hole in here. Remember the original has got this hole in the center here. So I'd quite like to create that. 
So I'm going to go back to my ellipse frame tool. It's already there, so that's great. And I'm going to hold down the Alt key again, and click and drag from the center, and then hold the Shift key down as well. So that's combining the Shift and the Alt, or the Option key on the Mac, and drag this circle out. And I'm just going to stop about there. Great. So hit the V on the keyboard, or click on your selection tool, and drag over those two shapes. So I've got them both selected. And now I need to use the circle at the front to cut a hole in the object at the back. So we're going to create now a compound path. We're going to make a hole in the center of this one. So the first one, remember, is going to combine. Well, that's pretty useless. The second one subtracts the front from the back. Ah, well, that's what I want. So one click, and there we have it. There is the start of my cog. Excellent. I'm not going to go much further than that, actually. Uh, what I'd like to do, though, is put some, put some texture in there, make it look a little bit more metallic. So while it's selected, File and Place, and I've got some textures on my desktop. Ugh. Ignore that. got some textures on my desktop, uh, some metal textures. So here we are. I've got uh, copper, rusty. Let's see what that rusty one looks like. Yeah, that'll do. Quite like that. And open. And there we can see it's placed the image inside there. It's not filled it, has it? So I'm just going to click on in the control panel, fill frame proportionally. There we go, that's filled it. And view display performance, and we'll turn it on high quality display so we can see that image at its full quality. One more thing I'd like to do to this is I'm going to click on FX in the control panel and choose a bevel and emboss. It doesn't really matter which one we choose at this stage, to be honest with you, because it's going to open up the panel for all of those options. But you can see I chose that one and it instantly applied an effect. So, a uh, bit soft, so I'm going to change that from smooth to chisel hard. And here we go, this is a typical uh, InDesign bug going on here. Uh, I'm going to get this size down to about two mil. I've lost my preview. Yeah, I've lost my preview. I'm going to click on OK, reopen it. Let's see if that's fixed it. That's fixed it. Uh, nothing I can do about that. It is a little bug. So chisel hard, that's good. Size, I think two is plenty. Maybe even 1.5 would do. I can't get 1.5 on there, so I'm actually just going to type it in. So 1.5, that's worked. The altitude, I'm going to get that down to about 20% just gives the shadow a little bit of a, a stronger look around here. And I think, to be honest, that'll do me. I'm just going to give a compulsory drop shadow on this. I'm quite happy with that default one, to be honest with you. And I'm going to click on OK. Ah, hit the W, click away, and there we have it. There's the start of our cog. Well, I hope you enjoyed that. Happy experimenting.